All right, everybody, good afternoon. We have ourselves a final injury report for this upcoming Bengals game. It's pretty short on both sides, and there's a lot of things that we don't yet know. We're going to need more information maybe late tomorrow or maybe not until early Sunday. But uh, the information that we have is relatively succinct, and both teams can feel pretty decent about where they are in terms of health. So let's go ahead and take a look here. I do not have the uh, practice reports, but obviously that doesn't matter nearly as much as whether or not we expect players to play. So, two players are listed as out for this upcoming game. We have Kobe Bryant and Artie Burns. Both cornerbacks, pretty much expected. Um, I didn't get some sense of overwhelming optimism about those guys being able to play earlier this week when Carroll was talking about them, so I'm not surprised that they are both out. Um... I don't think it'll be a huge deal. Artie Burns, maybe. Artie Burns was actually playing pretty decently, and he's a guy that I have some degree of trust in. Kobe Bryant really wasn't playing that well at all, so uh, I don't I don't know if he was going to get on the field anyway now that everybody's back, everybody else is back. So what this does do is create a little bit of an issue at nickel, so we're probably going to see some Witherspoon. I got a couple comments yesterday pointing out that Julian Love can play some nickel as well because he's not going to be having to play safety every snap because Adams is back. So that's true. That also could work, although we are supposedly going to do a lot of three safety sets, and Love would be a part of that. So I uh, we'll have to see exactly how we choose to deploy our personnel. But uh, Kobe Bryant and Artie Burns sitting this one out. We have one player listed as doubtful. It is Damian Lewis. So not looking good there, and that's a little bit unfortunate because it puts our interior offensive line in a bit of a weird spot where I don't know what the play is going to be, and I don't know what the right play is. Um, you think about it, Damien Lewis, he's our left guard. Our backup left guard nominally is Ben Brown. Do we want to put Ben Brown in there? Do we want to bump Evan Brown over and then put Oluwatimi at center? Do we want to bump Phil Haynes over and put Anthony Bradford at right guard? It it's um kind of weird. It's kind of a weird spot there. I understand that this team probably doesn't want to mix and match too much, so I do expect Ben Brown to probably get the start, and then we go from there. But um, yeah, not not great to not have Damian Lewis, even though he's not playing all that well. And we've proven that this team this team can still have success in all areas of offense without having all their offensive linemen. Damian Lewis is a guy that I want to have out there right now in his contract year when we don't really have a left guard of any real degree of excitement behind him. So, yeah, hoping he can be back for next week. I was hoping the bye week was going to get Damian Lewis back. It didn't happen. So, not expecting to have him. We have two players questionable. One is Drew Locke, who, I mean, obviously he's a backup anyway, but... Um, Worth monitoring here because I don't know where the ankle injury came from. Still don't really know what's going on there. Uh, so at the very least, it looks like we won't need to activate Allers. So I guess our Ailers. So I guess that's good. And Drew Locke did make a couple nice plays for us in the uh, in the last game we played. So it's going to be nice to have him around because we know that Geno Smith, while he's good to go, is not truly a hundred percent. So, it, it, we want to have Drew Locke around, period. Our other questionable player is Phil Haynes. So, I'm guessing this is a circumstance where we can't list him as probable because there is no probable anymore. So, we just have to list him as questionable, but we expect him to play. He participated in practice throughout the week. That makes me think he's going to play. And we just have to designate him somewhere. But I have to believe his odds of playing are significantly better than 50%. I'd probably put it somewhere around 70 to 75%. So, yeah, still some question marks in the interior offensive line, but overall this is not bad. Some players who are not listed include DK Metcalf, so he's good to go. Charles Cross, not listed, so he's good to go. Geno Smith, Jamal Adams. So there should be no doubt that those guys will be playing. Now, we're going to have to see how they play when they get out there, especially especially a guy like Charles Cross, who has his uh, hands full this week. And I'd throw Geno Smith in there as well. But um, they're at least going to go, and theoretically, there should be nothing holding them back. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, any player you don't see listed here who wasn't mentioned, 
like Kenny McIntosh or Abe Lucas. They're not they're not back yet. Abe Lucas is ineligible to come back yet, so that's not even really a consideration. So let's flip on over to the Bengals side of things. I found this tweet from a uh, Bengals beat writer on uh, X here. Uh, Bengals injury report includes Cheeto Bay, Awuzie, Devin Harper, T. Higgins, and Josh Tupo as questionable. And I believe I saw the quote from Zach Taylor that Awuzie and Higgins, and those are the big ones, are going to be game time decisions. Now, Higgins and Awuzie practiced today. Higgins actually was a full participant. It would be a little bit surprising if they're able to practice as much as they were this week and still can't play. So I'm kind of expecting both guys to play. It could be, like I said yesterday, a Saquon type of situation where they're testing it out and then he actually can't play, but I think he will. So honestly, I'm looking at this Bengals team right now and thinking they are pretty much healthy. Akeem Davis Gaither is the one player they have who is unlikely to play. And I guess Tupo is also somebody who's worth monitoring because he popped up on Friday as it did not participate. So maybe they don't have both those guys, but neither of those guys are hugely pivotal players for that Bengals team. The key guys here are Awuzie and Higgins. And I would suspect that Higgins plays and Awuzie practiced a decent amount this week. So I kind of expect him to play as well. Now, Awuzie in particular probably won't be 100%. So when you're looking at the Bengals secondary here, you're looking at the Bengals uh, cornerback room, which Awuzie is their number one. That's something you have to be looking at and thinking we can attack that. So we're, we might have to go a little more receiver heavy in this game than they've been over the past uh, couple of weeks and try to exploit that because Awuzie, less than 100% theoretically. Then you've got Cam Taylor Britt, who I like, but he's a young player. And then they've got, I think, Mike Hilton at slot, which he, he hasn't really played well at all so far this year. He, generally speaking, has been a good player, but so far this year it doesn't look good. But um, they look healthy. And, of course, the big one, the real big one that is not even mentioned here is Burrow, who we'll talk more about this tomorrow morning, but uh, Joe Burrow, to me, looks ready for action, 100% down to go, ready to play like he played last year and the year before. So that's ultimately the true big one. And we'll, we'll talk about Burrow tomorrow, but last week to me, he looked like he was pretty much back. All right, that's it for the injury report for the Bengals, and that's what we're looking at going into tomorrow's game. Not bad, could have been better. Overall, though, you're going to see a lot of other teams out there that are more injured than the Seahawks are right now. This is clean for this part in the season. We are headed into, what, week six now? This is relatively clean, so let's try to keep it that way. And we're going to have to try to beat a Bengals team that is mostly at full strength. All right, go Hawks. See you guys later.